समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतम करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गुरु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेव सुत देव कंस चाणूर मर्दनम देव की परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु so uh, the last three verses of this chapter today we begin verse 25th it goes manap manayo tulya tulyo mitra re pakshayo ho sarvarambha parityagi gunatita sa uchyate now the translation of this verse is the same in honor and dishonor the same to friend and foe abandoning all undertakings he is said to have crossed beyond the gunas now the this kind of description see if you see just the translation the way the translation has been done you always feel that what kind of a man will he be just imagine that he is the same in honor dishonor that means no emotional or intellectual reactions take place in him the same to friend and foe hmm? that means he has no discrimination of wrong or right or or uh, what is good what is bad or, or who is good for me who is bad for me also abandoning all undertakings the translation is abandoning all undertakings theek okay, hai sir sarvarambha parityage it says see sarvarambha parityage the giving up of all beginnings arambh parityage that means you do not begin any action now this is very very strange if there is a and such a man he said to have crossed beyond the gunas now this last bit is important in this verse that such a man is said to have crossed beyond all gunas this man is not you and me please be very clear our body mind and intellect comes under the three gunas and all human beings who have a body they have a combination of three these three gunas so we obviously are not one of those who who are into this category so who is into this category that is what is to be he is describing a man of realization he is not describing a person like you and me dekho a man of realization like buddha like jesus you know jesus on the cross could say the people who nailed him the people who were bleeding him to death he could say lord forgive them for they know not what they do imagine look at the compassion look at the understanding hmm? that means that he is the same to foe and friend ho gaya ya nahi hua while he was carrying the cross there were people uh, abusing him and spitting on him and hitting him but he still carried on without retaliating to them this is the same in honor and dishonor isn't it but jesus is not you and me similarly buddha i had told you that thing about buddha na that there were some people who came and they started abusing buddha and uh, buddha was cool calm because he was not affected by them anybody who thinks he is he is an individuality he is a jeev he will feel insulted he will feel humiliated but somebody who has gone beyond the jeev bhav and lives in lives swastha lives abiding in the pure self only he is one person who goes beyond so buddha the his disciple said shall we give him back how dare he talk like that to you so buddha says that if you have taken his abuses you give them back 
I have not taken them, so the poor man has to take them back to his home with him. So this is the description of this man. Now, nevertheless, now the question arises that if it is only a realized master who can become like this, so you and I are not realized, Arjun was not realized, so why is this advice being given to Arjun? Think about it. Obviously, the advice is being given to us that you aim to be such a man of perfection. Being in the world, swimming in the world, doing all your activities in the world, yet you rise above it like the lotus. Padma Patra Devambhasi. You know that line of the Gita, that just like the lotus leaf, it is in water. There is water under it, there is water over it, it grows in water and yet it is dry. That is the description that is given. Now here, see, uh, this particular man, mana apamana yotulya, that means man and apaman, these two, honor and dishonor, are emotions that are evaluated by the intellect. Certain people think certain thing as a dishonor and some people think the same thing as an honor. Believe me, it is true. There are rituals where we would think that how could anybody do this kind of thing? A taking a dowry from the boy's parents is considered a sin in North India, whereas in the lower regions of the Tarai, Himalayas, when a girl is born, they celebrate because the girl brings in the dowry. So now in that situation, there are two different kinds of uh, traditions. What is man and what is apman? It is an evaluation of the intellect depending on how you have been brought up, with what conditions, in what culture you have been brought up. And that is what you consider as insult or not insult. Hmm? Now, <clears throat> such a man, Deko, what he does is he does not in Dhyan se sunna, he does not internalize the emotions and actions of others. Somebody else has said something. How is it affecting you? Someone else has done something. Do humiliate you, insult you. Why should it affect you? So it is his action, his emotions. This man learns not to internalize it because he realizes that those are products of the of those people's minds and intellect and body. They are not products of his mind, intellect, and body. And so the and such a man naturally then, if he does not internalize the emotions of people who are trying to harm him, there is no enemy and no friend. Another thing, please remember, relationship always inherently calls for two people. My relationship with Mr. A. Okay? My relationship with Mr. X, my relationship with Mr. Y, all those are other than me. Only then can they be a relationship. But this man who is sthita in the ultimate reality of the world, which is all pervading, pervades the char achar, the, the uh, verse that we had done earlier. कि चर अचर में सारे में है वो चीज तो who is foe and who is friend it is him alone there are no two people variables नहीं है ना there is no duplicity there are no two people so then there is no foe and no friend hmm? now see देखो ऐसा है कि honor and dishonor they are relative to the 
concepts of the mind to the prejudices of the mind to the beliefs of the mind theek hai they are mental perceptions of a certain action or a certain happening honor and dishonor are mental perceptions such a man goes beyond these mental conceptions it is only you and i who say the same kind of thing hmm? now so this is one of the signs of a person who has attained perfection in the world he it, it is not a description of a common person like you or me it is a description of a man of perfection okay now hmm, see also honor and dishonor as i said is relative so like gurudev says it goes on changing from time to time place to place and person to person if a small child uh, abuses you he doesn't even know the meaning of the abuse the same abuse is given by an adult you will mind the abuse of the adult whereas you will laugh at the abuse of the child and wonder where has he learnt it from because the child has neither intends to insult you nor does he know the meaning of it so see honor and dishonor depends on the time the place the person the situation so it is a relative thing hmm? and i have also told you that it always uh, insult or foe and friend and all that it is all something see you try to live someone else's action someone else's words and you go on churning them in your mind and feeling bad why somebody said something somebody did something well it is his mind it is his speech and it is his body with which he is doing so do not the the maha mantra is do not internalize other people's actions and other people's words or other people's emotions why are you internalizing them okay now <clears throat> acha then the tricky part is where he says abandoning all undertakings abandoning all undertakings is a dicey thing here very clearly you know very very clearly in other texts shankara has clarified this and he has said that all undertakings only means they exclude varna ashram uh, activities belonging to your ashram you have to act like supposing you are in the grihastha ashram you have to act like a grihastha you cannot give up your duties and say ke all uh, um uh, sarva uh, 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 kya hai ye um sarva arambh parityagi hu main to you cannot do that so varn kya hai aapka you are a brahman you have to do the work of a brahman you are a kshatriya your duty is that of a kshatriya the lord doesn't tell arjun was a kshatriya na the lord doesn't tell him ki you run away and go into meditation he tells him get up and fight do your duty so why doesn't he tell him sarvarambha parityagi no because arjun is not a realized master he is a man of the world like you and me desirous of victory ambitious and in the grihastha ashram also so he says you have to act according to your varna and your ashram you have to do your duties okay so ye aap yaad rakhna but what does it mean that abandoning all other duties when you are trying to rise above your jeeva bhava you have to discard all those things that you keep running after which do not help you in your progress which do not help you to evolve which are a waste of time totally like people sitting in front of the television listening to all kind of rotten things which have got no connection to them or their lives or their country or anything but they go on watching go on watching hour after hour that kind of useless activity which takes you nowhere discard <coughs> for that matter any other activity 
running about the whole town, visiting exhibitions when you don't need anything. Why are you doing it? Attending all kinds of parties and things and all when they do not contribute even a jot to your happiness. You might even come back from a kitty party with a bad stomach. But jana hai, for what, what have you gained out of it? Except wasted time for quite a few hours. So those kind of things which do not help you to evolve, which do not help you to grow. A serious seeker, this is an advice for a seeker, okay? Remember that. A person who is trying to perfect himself. These advice are not for just any common man who is totally into sensuality. Carry on. They are like animals anyway, who are totally into sensuality. Whereas here, this advice is for a serious-minded seeker, an earnest, sincere seeker who wants to perfect himself, who wants to evolve. So then he says, Sarvaramb Parityagi. <coughs> Don't try and claim ownership over everything. When you do that, then you strive to possess it. You go on striving to possess this, to possess that, possess this, possess that. Whereas how many times the ownership has changed? Take a piece of land. It has been there since millennia. And how many people have been born and died saying that this is mine, this is mine? Tell me. That piece of earth must be laughing. Ki keh lo. Huh? Call yourself the owner of me, but you really are not. So, just that, huh? that don't go on claiming ownership of any, all kinds of your possessions. None of them was brought here by you. None of them was created by you. Uh, you never created the raw materials even for your house. So, what are you talking about ownership? And it is going to remain here when you yourself are gone. So, where is the ownership? Hmm? So, these qualities must be practiced by every serious seeker. Come to verse 26. Mamcha yovya bhicharena bhakti yogena sevate sahagunan samatityetan brahma bhuyaya kalpate And he serving me with unswerving devotion and crossing beyond the gunas is fit for becoming Brahma. Again, this is a description of the person who has totally perfected himself, who has become fit to merge with the Lord. And what does he say? And he, such a man, the description of whom you have already read, that the same in honor, dishonor, the same to foe and friend who thinks that gold and a, a piece of um, mud or, or a metal or anything is the same. To such a man, he says, see, Gita always teaches you the practical aspect of your growth. It just doesn't say that become perfect. How? So, with after giving any one advice, it gives you a practical advice of how you can do it. So, here, you know, this practical textbook, as Gurudev says, of religion, he says that do all the work that you are doing. In any field that you are working, continue working. But do it in such a manner that you feel you are doing the Lord's work and he is allowing you to do it. Through you, he is functioning to do it. Right? And he says that, see, and he serving me with unswerving devotion. Unswerving devotion, this is the most important, very, very important line. And he says, devotion and crossing beyond the guna. Now you say that how can anybody who has a body cross beyond the Three gunas. Deko, jab tak jeev bhav hai, till such time that you think you are, say, Mr. Ayer. 
you will be under the influence of the three gunas. When you go beyond the individuality to understand your true reality, that you are not the body, mind and intellect, you are in effect the Lord Supreme himself that is functioning through you, that is making this whole mass of flesh, bones, blood, skin act. Otherwise it is all matter. We know it. It is all matter. The only reason why it acts, think, is because of that supreme power. You are that supreme power. This body is an instrument given to that power to act. So, any person, you know, who, who is, uh, he has to think, Deko, he has to think that serving me, whatever action I am doing, he has to dedicate it to the Lord and understand that he is only serving the Lord's purpose. He is not doing it for himself. There should be total selfless action, which the Lord has said as karma yoga. And, and, he, and he says all the time, at all times, he is supposed to do it. Effectively maintained all the time that I am not the doer, I am not the doer. Someone else is doing through me, no matter what action is being done. Understand that he is enabling you to do it according to your vasanas, according to your mental makeup, according to your desires. He is only helping you. So who is the doer then? Right? There is, he is the doer without doership. Doership belongs to the individuality of the human being who is deluded to think that I act. I do seva. You do nothing. The Lord is using your body to do all that seva. Okay? Now, this as I told you is Karma Yoga. Now, Gurudev says that the Gita's aim, it's a very practical handbook, as he says again and again. So, because he is teaching Arjun, don't forget that, that this whole Upadesh is being given on the battlefield and also the Upadesh is to get up and act. But he is teaching you the mindset with which you should act for your own benefit, for your own victory. And therefore, he gives practical advices and he says that Gita takes religion out of the temples, out of puja rooms, out of, uh, <coughs> you know, out of little, little rituals and puts it back into the field of work. How to apply this knowledge in the field of work is what the Gita is taking, teaching you that in your everyday activities, no matter where you are acting, no matter what kind of work you are doing, how to apply this knowledge for your benefit and for your progress is what the Gita is teaching. Also, he says that he is fit for becoming Brahman. That means he goes beyond all the three gunas. He is not under the influence of these three gunas. He can choose to transcend the gunas and merge with the Lord. Gurudev used to give an example. This is Raman Maharshi's example actually. A Mr. Ayer who had three wives. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Hmm? Gurudev of course used to call them Narani, Kalyani and Lakshmi or something like that. So he says that when Mr. Ayer dies, all the three become widows or not? Because they were rel their marriedhood was relative to Mr. Ayer living, their, their husband living. But when Mr. Ayer dies, it cannot be that Kalyani and uh, Narayani become widows and Lakshmi is still a Sumangali. That does not happen. Similarly, in the three Gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, when the individuality to which they belong is dead and gone, 
when the person has gone beyond his individuality and merged with the supreme truth, then these three gunas, which belong to Prakriti, do not affect him at all. They do not affect him in any possible way. Hmm. So you have to work with the right attitude and also when you work with that kind of right attitude, it give, it enables you for meditation very carefully. It enables your mind to become steady. Otherwise, most of the people who are into sensuality and into the world of objects day in and day out, when they sit for meditation, they can never calm their mind. They can never concentrate. They can never ruminate deeply or meditate. No, they can't. Because their mind is all over the place. It will molest the meditator. So, how to make your mind meditation worthy? This is the secret. This is the practical hint. That do all your work dedicated to the Lord and also selflessly understanding that I am His instrument and I am working for Him. I am not working for anybody, not even for myself. Okay? <clears throat> so, with this attitude, your mind will become calm, tranquil, peaceful. It gains a certain amount of power to concentrate, be in one place and listen to your command. So this is what he is saying. Now, how one goes beyond the three gunas is that a dreamer, can he ever go beyond the dream? In the dream. <coughs> Think about it. Can the dreamer ever go beyond the dream in his dream? He can never. To, un to go beyond the dream, he has to jump start into another level of consciousness called the waker. <coughs> so, as long as he is dreaming, he remains a dreamer no matter what. Okay, come to the last verse. This is verse 27. Hmm? The Lord says, Brahma no hi pratishtaham amritasya vyayasya cha shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya kantikasya cha. For I am the abode of Brahma, the immortal and the immutable, the everlasting dharma and of absolute bliss. Hmm. See, this is a description of Brahma given by the Lord himself. But frankly, there can be no description of Brahma. He is beyond words. He is beyond words. Because, dekho, suno. Isme jo ye kehte na, I am the abode of Brahma, the immortal and immutable. That means Im immutable, changeless, immortal, timeless. But when you use these two words, see, timeless, hmm? timeless or changeless, that means there was a change and now changeless. <coughs> there was time, so you can say timeless. Otherwise, how do you say timeless or changeless? Words cannot describe him. He is beyond words. So, he is trying to convey, Gurudev used to say, he is trying to convey to your stupid understanding what pure Brahma is like. And that is why he has to use words because your intellect can revel only within words. Your intellect can understand only words. And that is why he uses these words like immortal and immutable. Otherwise, even these words do not describe him. Because the moment you say immortal, there has to be something mortal. 
it stands to reason otherwise there can be no word as immortal there can be no word as timeless unless you first use the word time so that is why please understand that the truth is beyond plurality it is beyond the delusion of the intellect it is beyond anything and everything it is beyond a description so no opposite terminology can be applied to describe this great grand reality hmm? now he says that you shall no doubt live in me thereafter that means the individuality cannot resurface <clears throat> see giving you an example when the ganges merges into the bay of bengal can it once again become ganges in the bay of bengal no it can never its water changes the name changes it becomes an ocean it becomes boundless it has no shape no name so no individuality anymore and it cannot go back to being ganges similarly he that merges with the lord supreme he merges completely and totally he becomes the lord himself as i say to meet the lord is to become the lord to merge with the lord totally hmm? otherwise there can be you there can be no transaction from one consciousness to another consciousness like as i told you that a dreamer cannot know who the waker is the waker is oblivious of the dreamer so this man goes beyond the frontiers of these uh, states of consciousness and the mandukya upanishad describes the fourth state of consciousness as turiya which is neither deep sleep nor dream no wake so that is the only way where he goes beyond the planes of these consciousness to the fourth dimension and therefore once he goes to the fourth dimension there is no coming back ha huh? and so live in this world gurudev used to say live in this world like a cracked pot that means no matter what is poured into it it will seep out for your own mental health believe me for your own mental uh, peace live like a cracked pot in the world no matter who says what no matter who does what let it leak out don't store it there some people pride themselves in the storage of their memory you know 20 years back that man had said this is this to me how dare he i have to take revenge now day and night his mind is going on with that dialogue of that man uh, which hurt him at that time neither is that man there nor is the dialogue there anymore nor is anything you have stored it in your memory and therefore you are upset you are going on and on feeling sorry feeling sad agitated and having vengeful thoughts because you have stored it in your memory so live like a cracked pot as gurudev said that no matter what comes and from wherever it comes drop it let it go drop it because see you really do not know why how in what mental state and in what condition that human being is acting you don't know just like he doesn't know your mental state of mind you do not know his mental of state of mind but you judge him from your mental state of mind think about it think carefully every human being is different and he behaves according to his own vasanas and according to the situations and circumstances in which he has grown up hmm? so all this and uh, i mean two three verses before there was this word called swastha you remember and i had told you 
लिव एज स्वस्थ यू विल बी हेल्दी यू विल बी हैप्पी द वर्ड फॉर हेल्थ इज स्वस्थ इज इट मैं स्वस्थ हूँ स्वस्थ इज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू वर्ड स्व मैं स्थित established in my true self abiding within my true self that is called swastha shankara gives another meaning also to swastha which is a man who is constantly content and happy he is content and happy no matter what is happening outside no matter who says what or whoever does what or whatever is the situations around him that man is always happy he is called swastha and that kind of mental state of mind showers happiness on you believe me it constantly keeps you in a state of pleasant mood and happiness and when that happens only a purely happy man can give happiness to others if you have even a little bit of agitation in your mind you will be snapping at other people isn't it so please understand that if somebody else is doing that just think how unhappy he himself must be so learn to be swastha according to shankar bhashya it means a man who is contented and constantly happy no matter what it says or oh, what the so um, another meaning shankara gives to this verse is that it is the power of maya which acts as ishvara maya acts as ishvara and then as ishvara and ishvara manifests through maya through his prakriti to create this world hmm? now we are in a delusive world we see the world filtered through our intellect and our mind okay so when we do that we are living in a dream what can a dreamer see the world as he can only see the dream he cannot see an iota of the waking world no he can't so long as he is dreaming everything in the dream is real to him so if somebody kicks him he will feel hurt if someone stabs him he will bleed if the tiger mauls him he will die but all that will happen in his dream alone the only way is merging with the lord evolving yourself to merge with the lord only then can you wake up from this dream of illusion so then i just think all this you can leave then also gurudev towards the end of this chapter gurudev told us that when you through doing karma yoga when you keep your mind totally peaceful your mind becomes totally selfless and your mind get gains a poise of calmness and tranquility the reflection of the brahma in your mental plane will be very sharp and intense and the more sharp and intense the reflection in your mind the more sainthood you attain the more noble you will become and there is a test you can apply to yourself on that all the time guru dev again used to say that when you progress in your spirituality people start coming to you and the more selfish you become self centered and in the jeeva bhav you become and all your actions become selfish people start running away from you test that on yourself that do people love you or do people want to get away from you that is your test of spirituality so we stop here at this chapter and try to make your mental zone pure so that the reflection of the lord shines forth om
तत्सदिति श्रीमद्भगवद्गीतासु उपनिषस्तु ब्रह्म विद्यायागशास्त्रे श्रीकृष्णाजुन संवाद गुण त्रय विभाग योगो नाम चतुर्दशोध्याय पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णात्पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य शाति 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 हरि श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम